The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing your with grace at the、um, Durian Heat. We'll talk about issues around Southeast Asia, and this time、uh, I've been speaking with、uh, Jie Chen,、uh, who is the director of the Hidden Good. Well, I love this organization,、uh, organization so much. I mean, we just talked about what the company has done、uh, in Singapore, and also to uncover the good in people, and specifically from youth as well. And、um, they have their、uh, their own、uh, tagline there as well、uh, that we can build a better world to. Together we we look beyond the horizon where nothing is possible and every small act matters. And I can really feel based on the what they have done, the activities, the projects.、Uh, they have so many、uh, things going on. So let's continue our conversation、uh, with、uh, Jie Chen. So、um, you guys had a lot of projects.、Uh, I can see already from the YouTube and your website. But what have you learned, and what are the issues have you found, especially among youth nowadays? Um, I think in terms of youth issue, I、mm. think that's something that you know we we really explore because there are things that people think more of as youth issues, right? Whether it's education,、um, employment, and stuff. But something that we found.、Um, Is that every issue can be a youth issue? Like、mm-hmm. right now, one of the projects that we're working on is to build a more dementia-friendly community in Singapore,、right. in this neighborhood called Yishun. And normally, you wouldn't think of dementia as like a youth issue, right? But dementia, because it doesn't affect youth directly,、right. but indirectly, because people have grandparents, they have neighbors, they have you know relatives、exactly. that might be living with dementia, that becomes a youth issue. And I think being able to see every issue. Um, whether it's you know gender equality,、um, aging,、um, you know even transportation, right?、Mm-hmm. Being able to take ownership of all these different issues is really that that piece, you know, taking ownership of the world that we want to live in,、mm-hmm. um, and and I think that sense of ownership. Um, is really that that core of the youth issue, right? It's like taking ownership rather than expecting it to be done for you or handed to you.、Um, but yeah, being able to to do that, I think is is to me our our issue that we care the most about.、Yeah. Right. One of the issues that I figured、uh, among youth is. They really don't know what they want to do in their lives, especially after their、uh, college graduation. They have the papers, degrees with them, but after all, they don't know where to step into. And even th- even if they get、uh, jobs to work,、uh, but after all, after all, they have so many questions in their mind that whether this platform is right for them. So, wh- what、uh, what is your perspective when it comes to that situation among youth? So whether、um Whether they know what to do、mm-hmm. in there. Okay, so one of the initiatives that we have right now that's been running since、uh, um, since last year、mm-hmm. is called Lisa Beach, and it's something that we've been working with all the a lot of the different schools. So the tertiary education、right. level of students, you know, where they're thinking, okay, like, you know, or sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're so caught up in school that they kind of forget to think about, okay, so what do I want to do with my life? And then after school is done, then like, oh no, now what do I do? Right.、Mm-hmm. Um. So getting them to think about this. Um, and asking them, so you know, what's important to you? What's one of your goals? Doesn't have to even be a career goal, but what's something you want to do in your life?、Right. What's something that you value? And having a space to ask these questions、mm-hmm. um, really allows them to even dig deeper. So some of them might say, "Oh, you know, I want to be an aeronautical engineer or something."、Right. But right now, where they're at in terms of their education level might be really far away from that. So what we do is we break it down so that. Um, into pieces. So okay, here's the first step you could do. Here's the next step. So some some people maybe they want to build a business, and、right. it doesn't even this might not actually be what they end up doing.、Mm-hmm. But going through the process, of, okay, what's what do I what's something I want to do, and then breaking it down. So I want to build I want to build a cafe, for instance, right?、Mm. So you know a lot of people want to have cafes, and but. So, what's the first step they could do within the next three months to、mm-hmm. get closer to that dream?、Mm-hmm. Is you maybe you know go work in a cafe first, do research on what kind of cafe they would like to have. What is the ideal, um, uh, what does the ideal cafe、mm-hmm. look like? And and doing the due diligence、mm-hmm. to like delve deeper into what what their dreams are and being a platform to have a lot of these conversations that、right. might happen in schools, might not happen at home,、mm-hmm. um. 
I think is something that, that we hope to do too. And a lot of these projects, because they're youth initiated and youth driven, they're usually driven by a cause that um, someone cares about. Right. But that being said, you know, a lot of other people might have um, similar values. They might mm-hmm. not necessarily agree with the same cause. Maybe the cause is about that, that similar value that they have is about acceptance. All right. Acceptance can look in so many different ways, exactly. right? Or appreciation. Mm-hmm. So being able to also jump on other people's projects so that they can, you know, explore opportunities and perspectives different from their own. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's really a space where people can come and dream and do things they never thought they could do right. um, and have that confidence to say, hey, you know, I actually can, I can do something. I can make a difference. Right. How yeah. about uh, those um, younger generation who are not uh, privileged enough to uh, extend their, themselves further in terms of financial uh, status or family issues? Have you ever approached them? extend themselves further like Mm. um you mean if they extend like education or or what do you Uh, for example it can it can be very different perspectives first uh it could be education or second they want to set up their own company but they don't know where to approach in terms of funding Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think even before people set their own companies right sometimes it's the clarity or Mm. just you know, it's not, I'm going to start my own company. I'm just going to do it. Like, it's a lot about work, like getting that experience and that knowledge mm-hmm. and um, that clarity. They mm-hmm. might not have to go and work for like 10 years before they, they get that experience, but mm-hmm. at least doing research, talking to people, you know, like talking to people doesn't cost anything. Right, right. Um, you know, and being able to support them to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think our community at the Hidden Good is very diverse. Like, you know, we have people from all different walks of life, like different backgrounds, um, different um, at different points in their life too, but all youth. And I mean, the majority at least are youth. And and being able to let them see possibly, okay, so, you know, right, right now you might not have the financial means yeah. to maybe go to university or something. What's something you can do to continually learn? So making learning not look a certain way that you don't have to go to university to learn about event planning, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you just go work for events company and get that on the ground knowledge and understanding to really learn mm-hmm. and gain experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes that's even more powerful than just, you know, learning theories and, and all that stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, being able to break common perceptions, mm-hmm. I think is, is something that, that we really try to do too. I mean, even for people, opportunities don't even have to look a certain way. A lot of, I think, resources out there uh, are available and sometimes you don't see them. But in terms of you're talking about like technical experts yeah. into like what scholarships you can apply for and all that stuff, we have really good partners that mm-hmm. are specialists in that. So the National Youth Council in Singapore provides a lot of support for youth. Um, if they have an idea that they want to do, um, you know, they have the Youth Change, Change Makers Grant that they can apply for mm-hmm. um, and, you know, a variety of other options and opportunities that that they can take part in. But I mean, also that being said, I think we also need to make, we want to redefine what giving back looks like, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to you know, quit your job and go to Cambodia for like <laughs> a year and build a house to be a good person. Like right. it's not, it doesn't have to look a certain way. And yes, you know, that's wonderful that people are doing those things. Mm-hmm. But if you have the constraints of being, having to put food on your table for your family, you know, being able to, needing to support the yep. people in your life financially and you have those financial constraints you don't have to feel bad that you can't go and do those things because Mm -hmm. giving back can look in the smallest things like saying hi to the bus driver in the morning (laughs) um you know it could look like you know if you see a stranger that's looking lost like going making the little differences because in the end the little differences are the things that will make the biggest change in the long run not not like building a new school or a house like that will affect one community Mm -hmm. um but you know being able to um, kind of create that ripple effect. One of the projects that I really love that we're doing right now is called I'm Visible SG. So in Singapore, around um, the holidays, especially around Chinese New Year, you know, mm-hmm. there tends to be actually an increase in the number of suicides from the elderly, especially those living alone. Um, especially, you know, Chinese New Year, they make food every day and like every year and, you know, people don't come by. That, that lack of... Um, you know, that, that sense of like isolation and loneliness, I think is actually one of the biggest problems that um, the aging population faces in Singapore. We actually have a pretty good access to medical services and, right. you know, to shelter and food and, and the daily kind of things. But 
isolation and loneliness in the end, I think is is really what um, you know really the one of the biggest struggles for for the elderly in Singapore. And you know, so what people do as this part of the initi- initiative is that you know they just go and talk to a stranger. They talk to you know the like an older um, like an elderly man or woman that sits in your neighborhood that maybe you see every day but never took the time to go talk to. Right. You know, it could be like. Um, the cleaning lady that that you see all the time, but you just you always say maybe say hi, but you never really ask her what her story is. It takes what half an hour to have a conversation, mm-hmm. and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, that's it, true. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and being able to, and then we share those stories like online, our experiences after that. You mm-hmm. know, so like for me, I spoke to like the the cleaning lady at the the building across the street from our office, right, and. And yeah, you know, now like I see her in the mornings and, you know, it goes beyond just the hellos and good mornings and the, the mere pleasantries and greetings. But yeah, the other day she gave me pineapple tarts like oh my God, that that's she really made sweet. herself. And mm-hmm. I was just so touched because, you know, I did not expect that when I spoke to her. But being able to just make that connection and obviously not to assume that every old person is lonely. That's not what we're gonna, getting at at all. But yeah. to make those connections with strangers, it doesn't even have to be an elderly member of society, but... More so, um, you know, the people that might be unseen, unheard, um, talking to people that, that you often take for granted and that you often go, that often go unnoticed in, you know, in your daily life. So being mm-hmm. able to do that, I think is, and meeting people, yeah, meeting people where they are. So it doesn't have to look like, you know, a huge project that you run on your own, but the little difference that you make every day mm-hmm. that can make a difference in the long run. Mm-hmm. That's a really great approach. But... Before that, why do you think people do not want to talk to strangers? Is it because of the perception they have? and Or is it the, the stereotyping? Uh, or is it just the whole society that it has or, or crafted in such a manner? Um, I don't know if people don't want to talk to strangers. I think inherently as human beings, we want to connect. Um, we want to connect to other people. And there is this inherent desire to be part of something, like to belong. Mm. Um, but I think what stops us from talking to strangers is often our fear of, you know, looking silly or, or, um, our fear of, of what would happen if I did, you know, and, but, and we've had this happen in the Hindu lot because, you know, we do a lot of things where our users go talk to strangers right. and like, we did this thing called ice cream for stranger. And mm-hmm. I think you mentioned Kopi for stranger yeah. earlier, right? Yeah. And initially there is that hesitation. Um, you know, one of our guys for ice cream for stranger, we got strangers to sit down and have um, ice cream Ben and Jerry's together and it was really fun but first they had to go and approach a stranger and say hey you want to sit down and have ice cream with me and you know this guy he's like very cool guy like you know he is if you, if you think of like a popular kid he would probably be come right. under that category okay but he was so scared to talk to to the strangers because he was like you know I'm worried about like I I guess I never really I'm I'm scared of being rejected, you know, oh, like right. I don't want to deal with rejection. <laughs> so being able to get over that and just, you know, and, and once he started, once he met this group of like strangers and started talking to them and um, connecting, you know, they were there until Ben and Jerry's closed. Like, um, and it's just the initial inertia uh-huh. that they, that people need to get over. And after that, it's, it comes so easily because I think it's the initial question is like, oh, hi, you know, like, how are you today? And getting beyond those initial pleasantries and mm. and um, connecting, and after that, it just comes really easily. I think to to anyone, um, even the people who are more shy mm-hmm. or more reserved, um, yeah, it's it makes a whole lot of difference just reaching out. The reaching out is the hardest part. Everything right. after that, I think, comes a lot easier. <laughs> well, but on the other hand, I'm thinking that could it be also because of the culture uh, side of the uh, maybe the community or society that one holds? For example, if you talk about Malaysia, well, we we smile a lot, but we don't really talk to each other. And also, it's Malaysia is a diverse country that we sort of have our um, set of mind when it comes to certain race or certain religion. So it could be yeah. also a culture, isn't it? Uh, but but um, I'm not so sure about uh, in Singapore, uh, how has the culture crafted or uh, uh, thinking or the mind um, among people to talk to? Mm, so I think in in terms of culture in Singapore, mm. you know, it's Singapore has grown so rapidly in the exactly. last fifty years that mm-hmm. um, I think oftentimes you know we grew so fast economically, infrastructurally, like mm. that we kind of left a lot of that hard 
um, the heart kind of got lost mm-hmm. in, in the growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times, you know, it's really easy to get caught up chasing um, the newest job, the new, you know, the new car, the new restaurant on yeah. the market. Like, it's really easy to get caught up in all that stuff. So, but I think, as I mentioned earlier, like, I think it's an inherent um need for human beings to connect Mm -hmm. and sometimes you just get too busy you know we get too busy to stop and appreciate the people around us you know Mm -hmm. um to stop and um just take a look at the the world around us and actually see what we love about it rather than a lot of the complaints people in Singapore love to complain and like um (laughs) I think it's it's a national like thing that brings us together right people love to complain but often it's in jest but it's also like I think the complaining comes also from just sometimes that that people just need to let it out at times. <laughs> needing to let it out, yeah. but sometimes also forgetting what we have going for us. I it's see. Because so, we grew so fast that sometimes we never stop and look back on like, oh my god, what have we created and done? What you know the amazing um, things that have been done in the last fifty years? Mm-hmm. And rather than complaining that the train is like five minutes late, you know. Um, <laughs> which which happens here like sometimes very rarely but you know rather than complaining just be like wow you know we actually have a transportation system that takes us to any corner of the island you can take public transportation anywhere in singapore because we're so small yeah. but also because it's so well connected and i mean even when the the mrt um broke down last year yeah you know there was one night i think it just stopped for a few hours and people were freaking out because this never happens in singapore exactly. right everything runs so efficiently yeah. but you know we could look at the fact that the train broke down or that night, you know, people were offering car rides, like people were carpooling, they were offering rides to strangers Mm. to get them home. You know, there were taxis that were just um, offering an extra seat to a different passenger Mm -hmm. because they knew people needed to take it home. And, you know, when sometimes the the system breaks down, that's when people step up to, um, but being able to look at the good in in that in every situation, I think there's always a silver lining and there's always two sides to a coin. Right. I And, um, the culture in Singapore, I believe, is inherently good. Just sometimes we get too busy and we forget about it. We forget about being kind. We forget about being um, aware of the other people around us. But Singaporeans, I think, are... And even people living in Singapore, they they want to be kind and, and nice, you know, and to each other. And they want to live in g- good communities, but it's actually taking the time to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really... Um, I feel really happy talking to you because I get all those optimistic energy from by uh, via this interview. But I'm questioning this again. Uh, with the advancement of technology nowadays and also the whole lifestyle in Singap- Singapore that the business and the business and you have to chase one after when it comes to work and the lack of time to communicate... Um, would technology also take part when it comes to connecting to people? I mean, technology has connected uh, worldwide, but when it comes to communication, person to person, face to face kind of communication, um, has technology lessened that part? Especially when you see youth nowadays, we do glue ourselves on the phone about, by accessing to a lot of social media channels. Uh, does that disturb the communication, face to face communication, especially? Mm. I think technology has the ability to connect people, but also disconnect, you know, I think um, now when you go into the trains in the morning, everyone's kind of on their phone, you know, watching videos on WhatsApp, Facebook, Um, but but using, but technology also enables us to connect to so many people, right? Like on for our YouTube videos or Facebook pages, you know, being able to spark and have those conversations online is also incredibly powerful. But I think it's the mindful use of technology that, um, will allow us to use technology to connect rather than be disconnected by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that some you feel really strongly about this. So we work at the school um, and they said, you know, now during recess time, everyone's just on their phones. Like no one really yeah. is talking. Everyone's like just plugged into their own um, yeah. world online. And so what they did it was that they initiated this thing um I think we call it talk for Coke because we gave Coke um, to anyone that would like, we'll see how ah. long you can um, not use your phone in a right. conversation. So they would have to sit down. You can look at the video later online right. um, on our page, but they, you know, they would sit down and they would put their phone in a box mm-hmm. and they would start the timer and see how long they could talk for <laughs> without looking at their phones. And, you know, it was amazing because you had, 
students that would just usually would you know every five minutes you check their phone check instagram exactly. and stuff. But, yeah. um yeah being able to have those conversations and a lot of them found it really refreshing i mean it's something very simple um mm-hmm. just being able to disconnect um mm-hmm. to connect sometimes right because yeah we're so connected all the time and so plugged in mm-hmm. which is great too because we get to stay in touch online but being able to disconnect connect and, and connect i mean even at home with me and my family like you know dinner time is is a time that we put our phones aside and and just be with each other because it's we're so plugged in all day that mm-hmm. sometimes you just need that space to to connect with human mm-hmm. that's right? actually yeah. very good practice you know uh, just put away your phone especially when it comes to dinner or lunch table <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we'll continue our conversation uh, after this short break. Hope there is no uh, problem in the coverage problem this time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back.